let us know when to get going, Paige. Um, thank you all so much. Um, I want to welcome everyone to our weekly Group Together webinar series. Um, today we have the honor and pleasure of welcoming two of our ISA coaches. We have Seth Goldberg and Ben Pickthorn with us today. And um, they actually already got in, gotten started if you were on a little bit earlier with some questions. Um, so again, if you have any questions, please type them into the questions box and we will answer those um, near the end of today's webinar. Today is a 30 minute webinar and you will be hearing from these two amazing ISA coaches this webinar is being recorded so if you're on the webinar today and um, you want to re-listen if you missed some things and you want to go back and re-listen it will be emailed out if, if um, you know some friends that are not on the webinar um, it will be emailed out and you can send them the link um, as well as anyone who um, misses our weekly webinar you will automatically receive the recording and that is all for me so Seth and Ben you can just take it away all right well thank you and thank you everybody who's on here um, I just wanted to start by introducing ourselves just briefly, uh, kind of who we are and what we do. I'm, my name is Seth Goldberg. I'm the team leader for the Heil Group Southwest Market team, the original team that was with the Heil Group. Uh, been with them for five years and been running an agent team and also built up a junior agent program, um, which is a little bit about what we're going to talk about from the ISA front. So um, a lot of work with building ISA teams and also just agents in general. Um, dealt with a lot of expansion, how groups in about 10 cities now. So it's been a fun ride and I do um, maps coaching and do ISA on the side because I just really enjoy these conversations and where they go. So uh, Ben, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is Ben Pickthorn. I am located just south of Portland, Oregon. Uh, I've been in real estate for coming up on three years. My main, my entry into real estate was through the inside sales uh, agent position, uh, and I've grown. Uh, I'm, I'm now on my, my third iteration of myself, I guess. I, I grew a, a mega agent team um, here from uh, 74 to 150 transactions in year one by growing the inside sales team. Uh, I then became part of the Five Doors expansion network uh, and uh, helped uh, build a $1.2 million inside sales business. Uh, within uh, that that expansion model, and now I'm back to growing uh, another inside sales team for uh, a mega team here locally in Portland. So, uh, you know, I, I do some agent work. I help uh, at just personal production. Uh, my main focus is being an inside sales agent, so I'm in the trenches uh, as I'm coaching as well. Uh, so I, I, I get uh, the agent side, the, the rainmaker side, and um, and the inside sales agent side as well. I, I kind of worn all of those hats kind of at the same time. Awesome. All right. Well, so now that we got that out of the way, I wanted to just kind of cover a little bit of what we're going to get into today. Um, I want you guys to understand that this is all about just showing you, like lifting the veil a little bit on what it looks like to hire an ISA. What are some of these models? How can you compensate them? That's a super common question that we get how to recruit an ISA, OSA, what are you looking for? And then more importantly, training accountability metrics and how can we hold on to them? I mean, like, like the first question, three to four years of somebody who's done a great job for you, obviously they feel like they're being well treated and their skills are just getting better and better. So we're gonna cover those topics today and then at the end, we're gonna take any questions um, and handle some things that you guys wanna talk about there at the end. So um, first thing would be, when as an agent or a mega agent or a team leader, when do I hire an ISA? So I love this quote, when you have more time than money, then, then you, you have time to lead generate, then it should be you doing that, right? But when you're starting to get up to three to four deals consistently a month closing, and that's somewhere, depending on your price point, eight million to 10 million, that's when you need to start looking for some of that leverage. And so, uh, Ben, you want to add anything on that? Yeah, I think that's about right. I, I mean, it, you know, just you've got to be set within your budget model as well to be able to bring that on. And so if your price point is extremely low, uh, three to four deals might not be enough to, to really float that added 
uh, fixed expense into your into your um, into your business. So just be really cognizant um, uh, of what that looks like and the impact that that would make into your business. Yeah, I think it, it just comes down to kind of what Gary's always talking about is leading with revenue, right? So if you have the time to get out there and lead generate for your business, then you should be the one doing it. Very often we're getting uh, reached out to, hey, I just started the last 12 months or I'm in my first six months of real estate. I'm looking to hire an ISA. I think that's great if you got a pile of cash that you can float it. But for a good ISA, it's going to take time to get return on that investment. And if your time is sitting there doing the same thing, you, you need to just double down on your lead generation before you get out there and hire a team of them. Yeah. So, the, so the next is kind of what, what does an ISA model look like? So yes, maybe I am at that three or four deals a month or eight to 10 million and, and, and I am ready for it. How the heck do I want to pay them? So there's a couple ways. You could do full-time, part-time. They could be a W-2 employee. You're going to have paid time off and benefits if you possibly could. Um, a really common thing, and I'll let Ben jump in here too, is, is a paid base and then a commission on the back end, basically saying, hey, once you, once you hit some results, then we can start bonusing you, right? And something like that, um, I know for us, has always been in the realm of either 1500 to 2500 and then a five to 10 base when the deal closes. Now, I'll just speak to, as a agent side, I was a buyer agent for years, lead buyer agent, all that stuff. If I know that I'm getting a great uh, a seller lead or a buyer lead given to me, and, it, and the team's gonna say, well, you know, we've gotta pay the ISA who set that appointment for you five to 10%. I would do that all day long if I knew that it was a good lead, right? And so the, the, these bonuses don't have to come straight from the, the uh, Rainmakers or the, or the mega agent's bottom line coming from the company. You can come from an agent if, they're, if the value's there and they're knocking it out of the park. Ben, you have anything to add there? Yeah, I, I think that that's a really neat uh, way to look at things. But I mean, that that uh, typical uh, pay structure is about right. Just be just be very cautious and uh, when talking and looking into it with uh, how you can call it, whether it's a bonus or a commission. If the ISA is licensed or not, each state and each board is going to have uh, some different rules and regulations with um, with you know an individual getting paid on the back side if they're not uh, a licensed agent uh, and uh, and a lot I've seen I've even seen teams with licensed agents put the ISA on a green sheet um, and they uh, have a much smaller cap with the market center so they're actually adding uh, profit share potential to uh, yeah, to their sponsor and everything like that so but yeah this is about right uh, yeah, I, I traditionally start with uh, a 5% uh, bonus on the backside for uh, closed deals. Um, and then there's you, you also want to make it fun and exciting by having different spiffs throughout that, that you might throw out, different incentives uh, for number of listing appointments scheduled to cast. If, you know, if, you know, just find fun ways to incentivize uh, your ISA crew uh, month yeah. in, month out. Because it, it, can, it can be a grind without without that. Uh, yeah, I've seen that time and time again, where it's like, you, you may not know it, but 5% or even $100 to say, hey, you know, let's go get a pedicure today or let's go do something because you hit your appointment set goal or your appointment gone on goal goes a long way for culture when you're in a room cold calling or making some hard calls all day. So I, I think that's a huge part of that culture and making sure that that culture is there and active every day, starting with different huddles and stuff like that. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But um, have you seen the tiered structure before too, saying, hey, you know, first 25 closings, 5%, 25 to 56, 50 to 75, have that going up to seven. Have you have you seen that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I just started doing that, um, uh, testing it and uh, for with one of my ISAs to see what kind of, uh, at, instead of closings, I was doing it about, I was doing it with closed listings. Uh, more on the right. listing side just because we, just because we're more profitable there yeah so not so much on the inbound type thing more more um more inside sales absolutely yeah 
So the next thing, this is something that um, I hold really near and dear to my heart. We, we did this uh, and are still doing it. We've been doing it about two years, maybe more. And this, as a, as a lead agent or as a team leader of a group, I'm constantly looking for talent. And talent is a, is a it's the same kind of lead generation as looking for listings. I mean, you got to put the time in. And what you find is just because somebody is not, um, hitting the numbers that you expect an agent to do right away doesn't mean that a brand new agent or somebody just about to get their license can't come on and be working towards being a full-time agent all the while getting paid something for generating nurtures. So we actually had, um, I think it was in July, we generated over a thousand nurtures with just junior agents alone throughout our cities, which was amazing. Um, we're paying 20 to $25 a nurture. And a nurture, guys, just, just, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a word that's kind of gotten around now, but they, they need to fit the criteria, the motivation, the time frame. They need to be a seller, um, a seller uh, motivated time frame, meaning they say, hey, I, I'd like you to call me back in six months. They need to be not working with an agent. So there needs to be criteria that's set for these nurtures because you are paying for it but there's definitely great ways to do it. So if I was talking to an agent who's brand new and green and just needs to make a little money and can't just come in on a total zero, I'd have them come in for three to six months, plug into our training program, half the day or a little bit more, they're on the phones generating nurtures so they're making a little money, and then the rest of the day they're working on being um, licensed if they're not already, which now we're pretty much all of them have to be licensed, they're generating 500 nurtures. They're testing out of all our lead gen scripts, lead agent scripts, buyer listing presentation, shadow showings going. I mean, they're going through all this process, but they're also making a little money. So I've really, really enjoyed this program. Ben, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I, I always, you know, I, I saw Tim present on this and, and have heard you share on it uh, on a number of different occasions. I think that this is just a, the, the trouble is that when you bring in um, an ISA, you're committing to X amount of dollars per month, and you're crossing your fingers that your training and your culture and who they are is going to hold them there. Um, and inevitably, there are going to be times where a really skilled ISA is starting to look on the other side of the room at the agents and saying, oh, yeah. "Gosh, I wish I could. I, I really wish I could be an agent." And then in that process, then you're you're in essence saying well, the step up from an ISA is an agent. And that's not always the case. You can have a very massively successful business as an ISA. I'm living proof of that. Um, and and when with the junior agent model, this is saying, hey, look, we're all on the same page. And for you to earn your stripes and your seat as an agent, you've got to do these things. And I, I love this model because you're, you're showing people how to fish in your system and how to build a strong agent business. And then you're saying, congratulations, you've done the work and now you get to be an agent on our team. Like this is a, a right. big success and a big victory for you. Well, it teaches how to hunt. That, yeah, exactly. And you, and you keep that retention, right? Seth, I'd, I'd imagine that, that the agents that you have coming out of the junior agent uh, model um, are, are even more committed to, uh, to your team. Oh, absolutely. They're entrenched in the culture. And once you start getting a few levels of this, the levels deep into your team, now everybody sitting around goes, oh, yeah, you know, let me help you out on that. I heard that you said this script a little bit different. Let me help you out with that. You want that kind of camaraderie because they went through it. So they're feeling for you. They want you to get to the next step. Also, they, they also know the better you are, the better leads they're going to be able to work. So um, I've really enjoyed it. There are some setbacks. Just think, you know, it's not a lot of money out front, so it's got to be somebody who um, has a good savings or is really, really living on a tight budget. But if they dedicate their time to it, it's hands down, it's worked really, really well for us. So recruiting ISA talent. So this is, um, Ben, I'm going to let you take this one, actually, since you're running an ISA team. You want to go ahead? Yeah, absolutely. So there are a lot of different places that you can find talent, and, and I think that it's important as you're as you're going into this, you've made this decision. Okay, this is a the ISA is a system and a, a model that I want to Im implement in my business. Now, where do I find them? Um, I think the best place that you can find any, whether it's business 
or uh, person to work with is going to be from your sphere, the, your team sphere, the, your, you know, the friends of friends, people who are already uh, who already know about uh, how you do your business, what your culture is about, and that because they're friends, they they certainly want your business to succeed as well. Uh, this has been the number one place for us to find uh, talented individuals. Uh, past clients and allied resources, um, having that question of, you know, it, it's the referral question, right? Like, tell me about the type of employee that you're looking for, the type of client you're looking for. Um, and uh, may I also share with you the type of employee that I'm looking for? Uh, and and chances are that there's there's someone in that mix that they know of, that they've had conversations with, that they might be able to say, hey, how about uh, this person? And, and it's really about just uh, maximizing the amount of conversations that you have. Uh, we do use Indeed uh, quite a bit. We just have running posts um, on Indeed that talk about the, uh, the opportunity that's there. And we are just open to having any and all conversations with people who raise their hand and say, I'm interested in exploring this as an opportunity. Uh, for the ISA position as well, I love going to restaurants. I'm a pre I was in hospitality business for 19 years. Um, go talk to your servers, your bartenders, your restaurant managers. Uh, traditionally, those people want a different opportunity, and they're also great with people. Uh, and this is the ISA role is a great bridge from uh, the service industry into uh, uh, into a real estate career. So uh, always be looking. Uh, I, and, and utilize the Keller Williams programs, uh, career visioning and the KPA to, to vet those uh, potential candidates. Uh, yeah. It's a, huge and we're gonna get, it's a huge time investment, but it's worth yeah, it. Yeah, and we're going to get into what that looks like too, what you're looking for. Um, the, there's a big thing. One of our best agents, he's averaging five to six uh, sales a month right now, came through. Um, just through the market center, talked to the productivity coach, said that they wanted to be on a team, but just didn't really have the income um, to start off as a solo or, or as an agent, even on a team with no um, no base salary or anything. Started off as an as a, a JA and just is killing it now. Brought in multiple friends of his saying, "Hey man, I love the culture. I love what's going on." And just bought his first house. And it just you step back and you go, "Wow." That, that that sphere and that friends of friends, that outside, I can't remember the book it is. Uh, they spoke at Mega Camp or uh, Family Reunion two, three years ago, but it's about your circle of influence and your friends of friends are really the people that you want to get a hold of. So, yeah, I think that's great. Same thing, LinkedIn, Indeed, you can work that stuff. More often than not, your past clients, your team sphere, friends, that's going to really hit for you. You've got to build a culture with which your, your team is talking about and attracting talent. So when we're looking when we're looking at uh, hiring an ISA, we go through the career visioning process. Uh, it used to be Recruit Select, same thing. They've tweaked it and made it a lot more clear for us. So um, when we're looking at this, we're going to do a KPA, a validation, the comprehensive interview, check references, guys. It's the it's the point where everyone skips, and I can't tell you how many times that it's bit us. And because you want to move fast. And you look up one day and you go, yeah, I should have done that. I should have made that call. So um, we go through um, the career visioning process with our ISAs, the same thing we do with our agents. I mean, you want to make sure that you have a match on your team. Uh, if you're hiring just your first one, still, they need to match the vision of where you're going. It can't be a clash there. It needs to be, hey, I just want to see it on the rocket ship and I'm here to help. You're looking for somebody with strong um, assertiveness, vocabulary, and rapid problem solving. I love the rapid problem solving one because it means they can think on their feet. And there's no other time that you need to be able to think on your feet, find a solution, move quickly, than when you're making cold calls, calling neighborhoods, calling expireds, needing to handle those things. Anything to add there, Ben? No, I think you hit it all nail on the head there, Seth. Okay. Um, so tools. So um, we're gonna get into what you guys use if they're not something like this, but Boomtown's a great CRM to use. We've built in a Salesforce account at this point now. Um, similar just to be able to customize it some. Uh, Mojo is an awesome dialer. It's a triple dialer. If people aren't familiar with what that is, you can sit there with a headset on, ready to go, dialing three numbers at once, 
and that depends on what state you're in as well. I know there are there has been some legal stuff going on, but you can do a triple dialer, and it's not ringing in your head or anything like that. They just pick up their information's there, and you just go for it. So we can really we've got people making two three thousand dials a day, and so where are we getting that data from? So Vulcan Seven for expired FISBOs withdrawn, Coal Resources or Coal Directory for that circle prospecting data. Circle prospecting for us is the bread and butter of the Heil Group. That is what, like these nurtures are everything that we focus on. And the reason why is there's nothing more beneficial for your business than to have listing leads, right? So seller nurtures, not, not buyers, seller nurtures. And so will if somebody's within six to 12 months of listing their, selling their house, they have the motivation, the time frame, all that good stuff that we talked about, we want them in our CRM. We want to follow up with them. And that's actually something either you can have an agent do, you can do yourself, or you can have those inside sales guys doing that follow up for you too. What about you guys, Ben? What tools do y'all use? Same thing? Uh, yeah, we at, at Five Doors, we use Boomtown. Uh, we use a, 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 a green group real estate where I'm at now. We use a system called Firepoint. It's a, a little bit younger of a company. Really affordable and and really and pretty clean. Uh, we do use Mojo, the triple line dialer, uh, just because the integration. There are cheaper dialers out there. However, I, I think Mojo is, um, you know, for a single team, it, it's certainly the way to go. Uh, and then we we use Land Voice for our expired and FISBO data. Um, affordability. I was just able to to stroke a nice deal with them. They're uh, and that they're really easy to work with. Uh, Vulcan 7 has a dialer built into it as well um, in, in case you wanted to save a little bit of money and not go full force with the power dialer and just use uh, Vulcan's dialer. Uh, and cream of the crop for sure is, is Coal Realty Resource for um, for circle prospecting and off-market data. It's, it's cool. That's who we use as well. All right. So training, accountability, and retention. I know we're getting close to time, so uh, I'll get moving here. So the classic line, I do it, we do it, you do it. There's a growth control um, graph in career visioning, or it was in uh, RSTLM as well, and I love it. It's 30, 60, 90 days, and when you reach that 60-day mark, you expect that there, it's, it's turning into we do it, and then you step out, whatever role you're in, you step out and they're doing it, right? They are mastering it. So introduce one script at a time to ensure mastery. I, I really like this because I don't like to just, here's a book of all our scripts, go learn them, right? I wanna do one script at a time, let's master it. And, and instead of mastering it, I usually do internalize. I, I want people to internalize a script so that it's in there, they can pop out anything that they need to say if they get off of it and then they can come right back in because it's it's internalized self-driven especially for the junior agent model um it's got to be a, a, a path of here this is what it looks like this is what a win looks like this is what a loss looks like are you clear on what you need to achieve this week for it to be a win great go do that right i'm not here to um honestly i don't like being a manager being a leader is far more far more fun and that all comes down to the talent that you're leading so um you've got to, the speed of the leader speed of the pack you've got to you've got to be outpacing them yourself and yet you don't need to be micromanaging you need to they need to be clear on what a win looks like uh utilize 30 60 90 day plan for accountability in the role um, we have that in our coaching program uh what to track you can track your dial time dials contacts appointments and I like to take it even another step, appointments gone on, and then even more clients taken, right? So um, if we know that the lead measures are appointments gone on to closings, then why aren't we just talking about how many appointments I can get my agents on? Well, the reason why is that gives a huge gap for your ISA to say, well, my agent should have gone on it, but they didn't confirm it or whatever. And the, and the, and the flip side, the agent's going, oh, well, the ISA said a bad appointment. So control the controllable. If I know their dial time, if I know their dials, if I know their contacts, then they're putting in the work. And that goes back to that question earlier on. Uh, full time, six hours on the dialer, one hour uh, admin, one hour training breaks. It's kind of what that looks like. I mean, it, this is a phone animal. This is putting in the work. 
uh, using a four in one. Uh, we all in the Hive group use a four in one. It's just a great tool that uh, KW has been using for years and years. Talks about annual, monthly, and weekly goals. Breaks out what you need to do. And then provide additional training opportunities, KW events, bold, ISA coaching, quantum leap. You, you want to make sure that they're seeing that you're, you're pouring into their growth as well. I can't tell you how many classes, how many trainings that I've gone through just being a part of the Heil group and doing everything with them. So, I mean, it got me into this and, and I love doing it. So you need to, you need to put money back into your people. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I guess just, you know, shameless plug for the ISA group coaching program. Um, yeah. There are so there are so many uh, rainmakers and agents who are thinking about adding the ISA, who who are looking at it to be leveraged, and it's a lot of it is because they're one a lot of times uncomfortable with doing that prospecting themselves and being able to teach and coach someone that they're bringing up into that role for them. They're just not the right person perfectly suited to train and develop those ISAs. And that's yeah. where I think the ISA group coaching program is just hits the nail on the head because we are not only training, coaching, and developing, helping develop these ISAs, we are also uh, doing that for the entire sales team, right? Like everyone yeah. benefits from it um, and, and we get to, you know, leverage some of that training and, and development that normally fall on the the team lead or the rainmaker of sorts so yeah um, i've really enjoyed doing the coaching with the rainmakers um and just helping them to set all these things up so that their isas can really go knock it out of the park so it's not only an isa person who's making the calls we work with the rainmakers the mega agents we we sit down because we're doing it in real life right now as well so it's just a really fun thing for us to do and and yeah, it's a shameless plug, but hey, we, we deserve at least a minute for it, right? Yeah. So here's that that's kind of wraps up everything that I was going to cover. Ben, can you tell them your email address as well? I didn't have you on here. Yeah, no, it's quite all right. It's mapscoachben at gmail.com. Yeah, so if, if you guys, this is kind of what we cover in our group coaching for the inbound and outbound agent twice. Um, monthly one-on-one -on -one individualized coaching with Ben or myself, and we have a couple other coaches as well. Weekly group training calls. We all get on weekly and work through all the kind of stuff that we just talked about. Agent calls are recorded, so you can stream them. You can have access to them. Go back and look at them. And then for the Rainmaker, we have once a month, one monthly group call um, that's talking about culture. What's your ISA needs from you? Personalized electronic update after every coaching call for the ISA or with the ISA. So the Rainmaker's staying in the loop as well. And that's super important to us, guys. We're here to help leverage Rainmakers out. And like what Ben was saying, we care about um, these ISAs, these inside sales. We want you guys to grow your business and not be in that role forever. Build it out and make it huge. And it's beneficial for everyone. We want you to be leveraged too. So if you have information or, or want information on it, there's a link up there. And then also email me, Seth, at HeilRealEstate.com for any kind of inquiries of getting into the coaching program, anything like that. Paige, it's all you. Yeah, so um, let me look back at some questions we may have had. Um, looks like you answered that one. Um, after how many months or after how many closings would you suggest a junior agent slash ISA take their first co-listing with the Rainmaker? Oh yeah, so that's totally up to the Rainmaker. For me, it's all about how they're doing, right? So again, if you set the expectations and I need you to be in a three month, um, a three month course of action being an ISA or a junior agent, I'm, I am totally open if you set an appointment that you call me in or you call a senior agent in on the team, you say, hey, I just set this really hot appointment. Can I go on it with you? Absolutely. I don't care how early that is because it's learning on the job and it's showing them the best thing, which is, hey, set an appointment. You're going to get to learn even more and get paid on it. So as early as possible, you just want to make clear that just because you did that or just because you're right there doesn't mean that you're off and you don't have to be a junior agent anymore. It is a certain commitment because the team needs to set standards and forecast where you're going. Okay. Um, Kurt asks, do you have a 
year two class versus new ISA class. Um, so I think just some clarification about what the ISA coaching program is. Yeah, so we do twi two times a month. We have, I, I have a 30 minute call with whomever you want to be on, on the call with your team. So like I said, sometimes I'm working directly with the, the team owner and strategizing on growth and stuff like that for them and their ISA. And then sometimes I'm on the call directly with the ISA and it's up to you guys. So it's twice a month. And then every week we have a group training call with the head coaches of our program and we put it together so that it builds upon itself. But you can jump in at any time because all the calls are recorded so that you can pick up on them. So you're getting at least two, twice a month individual coaching calls. And then you also have one once a week um, group calls. Hopefully that answers it's that. Eight, yes, eight total hours of coaching a month, which is a steal for uh, for the value that you're paying that, that you get out of it. Yep. Okay. Um, Kevin asked, um, do you have a little bit more information on the slide that had a 30, 60, 90 review or accountability? Yeah. Um, we cover all of that in the coaching program. If you just want to email me, we can send you uh, at least what that looks like or talk through it with you on what those expectations need to look like, uh, 30, 60, 90. I'm happy to talk about it. Okay. And then My Myrna, Myrna asked, um, what is the cost of the coaching? Uh, I believe it's eight, it, Paige, correct me if I'm wrong, 800 a month? Uh, that's right. Okay, so it's 800 a month. That's less than mastery, and you are getting um, those eight hours of coaching a month. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, and I think it's uh, pretty important to mention that the 800 a month is for the Rainmaker and the ISA team. So you have those two one-on-one -on -one calls every month um, and that can be with whomever on the team you want it to be and then we have the group calls that go along with it and that's a weekly group call uh, for for your ISAs and then um, the monthly group call for uh, for the rainmakers and this just keeps everyone on the same page um, and you know really helps with accountability and communication with your entire ISA team that sounds like a value yeah. to me. No, I'm kidding. The, yes. Hey, sign exactly. me up. <laughs> so, uh, Rhett asked, how do you enroll? I went to the link above and never got, an, got to an enrollment page. So, me, um, I'm going to – go ahead. Yeah, send me an email at Seth at Hile Real Estate, and I'll send you the uh, form. Perfect. Okay. Um, so, uh, Kurt, I'm going to ask that you email Seth uh, that question, and, and he can he can go uh, a little bit further in depth. And then everyone else, um, I'm going to be sending out uh, this recording to you and to anyone that missed it. So feel free to share the recording, and we thank you all so much for being with us today. Ben and Seth, uh, thank you so much for sharing that value with us, and we look forward to seeing all of you um, in join group coaching so thanks again everyone so much and we'll see you next time take care thank you